Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 22 with our Realistic series. But I'm quite happy we're doing it like this. And drop that one in, and then that one. I don't think the one behind me is going to be within range. Oh yes it is. Are those two over there going to be within range? That's the big question. That one is. Oh, they are. I genuinely didn't think they were all going to make it. Right, that one's in. So I've got 8,400 litres there. And if we go and have a look in the shed in here again, you can see that I've got four pallets left, which is 3,000 litres. So I'm not going to be able to fit all of that into this spreader at the moment. But we can leave them in the shed there and I can come back and get them any time I want. I want to go out this way and I want to put a layer of fertiliser across this field. Got anything else I need to do with my time just now? We will go out here like this. And it does have quite a wide spreading width on it. I actually like this spreader. This one's quite a good spreader. And come all the way on around here. Now, there was, with the latest update, I know there's some issues that some people have been having with texture on the field after ploughing. But I'm not ploughing this field, so this one doesn't matter. Um, cultivating, I'm not sure if that makes any difference, if anything weird or hinky happens with that one. But um, ploughing, I've definitely seen pictures of some very strange goings on with that. Um... You, basically, you don't get any texture. It, it, all, all the straw stuff is being left over the top of where it's been ploughed, and it looks really weird. Um, I'm not quite sure why that's going on, but it is. There's not a lot we can do about it, so we'll just wait until giants come out and fix that one. I don't know if it's going to affect us on here, because the only fields that I have to plough is going to be the two sugar beet fields and also the one that we're going to be doing our um, silage harvest on as well. That one's also going to have to be ploughed. I did just miss a little bit, I realise, out back over on the other side. Um, I'll get that when we come back around the field again, I think. 18 seems quite slow. Is it just me, or is this a little bit slow? I mean, it might be that I'm getting accustomed to playing at stupid speeds on my other map, and uh, therefore, when I'm doing a normal speed, it, it does seem a bit sedate. Um, however, we will be able to fit, by the time we finish this field, we should be able to fit all three other 3,000 litres of fertiliser into here, but well, we don't need to. The other thing that I want to find out, with that pallet and bale shed... Will it accept uh, big bags? That's going to be our next test. I won't do that just yet, but we, we can go and test that. So, at the moment, I'm buying this fertilizer. Now, I did say before that I want to do this organic, so I would like to get and have organic fertilizer going onto the fields in proper manner. And we will eventually be able to get towards that. We can at the moment, so we're having to buy it from the shop. And I was previously buying whichever was the most expensive. I did do the overloaded pallets this time. So we'll go back to buying whichever is the most expensive fertilizer to represent um, the extra cost of buying a bit of organic fertilizer. And that way we can still do our organic farming here. That's what I'd like to do. If I can. I know that some of you would prefer it if I just did standard conventional farming. Um, maybe I will at some point in the future with a different series. But I don't want to with this one. Personally, I prefer... Uh, well, I have gone over this before. I, ju I just prefer um, the organic approach rather than um, putting too much chemical fertilizers on the fields. Uh, it just seems to be better in my eyes. Right, let's go around here and do a little spin there, and we are done. Right, so I've actually only got two and a half thousand litres of space left in this spreader, which is not enough to finish this field. Next on the agenda is to go and get a cultivator, which we'll use that tractor there for. And we will start cultivating in the field, so I'm just going to take this one over here. I'm going to park it in this shed. 
I wasn't going to go anywhere in particular with it. I'm just going to park it up. There. I'm going to stop there. And I'm going to go over to... Not you. I'm going to go to this one. We're going to go and put this trailer away. And then we're going to get the cultivator hitched on. So that we can start work in field 24. Right. A massive, great big cultivator right here. And hopefully we will be able to cultivate this field without too many problems. At least that's what I'm hoping. here so we want to get this one but right, I'm doing a new recording session now so I don't actually remember why I wanted to cultivate this particular field straight away uh, I think I was going to do uh, what are we doing I wasn't doing canola was I but I was gonna do wheat or but I think I was gonna do barley I'm sure of it barley's the one that we want I mean maybe I do wheat as well but yeah, the only reason I would be cultivating that up right now is because we want to get a move on with planting, I think. Pretty sure that's why. If I'm doing barley in this one, I can't remember what I said I was going to do in the other ones. Uh, I've said this before that I come up with a plan of what I'm going to put and where, and then I promptly forget about it between the recording and the next recording. But we will end up planting something so i know that i was going to cultivate this field and there was a good reason for it i think i was actually talking about doing wheat and barley um we know that the chickpeas and the lentils are cash crops only so i'm only going to be doing those specifically for getting more money the barley and the wheat uh, well, the barley is something that we need quite a bit of, isn't it? So that makes sense that I'm going to go and grow that. But I can't remember w whether I said I was going to plant wheat this time around or not. I think I am. I'm pretty sure I'd be planting wheat. Because I reckon it will want... An, and Oh, sunflowers as well. I'm going to want sunflowers because we haven't done any of those. And we'll need them for pig food when we eventually get around to doing pigs. So that's something that I'll want to make room for. And then there was the long field. That one's going back into grass so that we've got something for the sheep. Uh, yeah, pretty much it, I think. <laughs> I honestly can't remember. I should probably write it down somewhere or something like that. I think there is actually a mod where you can make notes against the fields so you can decide what it is that you want to do on each field. Although, I can't remember what mod that is. But anyway, it, it doesn't really matter as long as we get some crops planted. And I know that I was going to do at least one field of crops that needed to be planted now soon. So that's why I'm busy cultivating this up. Now, whether or not I was going to do any canola, I can't remember. If I'm going to do canola, that's got to be planted quickly because we're running out of time for that one. That one's got a, a limited planting window left now. I'm just coming up round for the end of the second time around the field, and I think that's probably going to be enough. I'll let the hired help carry on and finish this one off. Uh, yeah, I genuinely can't remember what I said I was going to go and plant in these fields. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this one going. And then I don't think we really need to prepare a lot of land for anything else. I kind of want to get going with the sugar beet and the uh, silage harvests that we want to do. So I'm thinking that September is going to be... No, actually, uh, sugar beet is not until October, and the corn is not until October either. Although, I'm not sure if the silage is better done before the corn actually gets completely ripe, or if we're supposed to go and do that, um, like, the stage before it gets completely ripe. Um because I believe you can do either now and I'm not actually sure which one is kind of the better option for it so maybe we should be thinking about starting that one a bit sooner um actually thinking I might go and look that up because if we can start it a bit sooner we in theory we should be able to start that next month and that would actually be pretty cool if we could start that a bit sooner I mean I don't know if it says anything in here let me just let that one 
Right, I think he's going to be fine. So, uh, down here, we've got our information down here. And we got crops. Let's just tell oh, the icon overviews there. And, and then we've got all the greenery in here. Arable cu uh, cultivating. No, nope, we don't want that. Um, cotton chaff and silage. Right, he's cutting that while it's green. Look, right there. Chaff is made by chopping crops or picking up windrows using a forage harvester and suitable header. You can cut down corn, wheat, barley, grass, sunflower, soybeans, oats, or canola, even if they aren't fully grown. Forage harvesters do not have a grain tank. Yada, yada, yada. Um, filling bond silage into the forage harvester increases the yield by another 5%. Right, so we definitely want to be doing that. Um, and then we can roll it. So, in theory... It says if it's not fully grown. Now, I don't know if you get a higher yield doing it there or if we get a higher yield if we wait until it harvests. But at the same time, I kind of like the idea of getting it done a little bit sooner. I feel that it might actually work out in our favor to go and do that. So while that one is getting started on there, I'm going to go and see he's doing a wonderful job. We've got little bits around here. I hate these little bits around the edge of the field. There's nothing I can do about it, so we're just going to have to put up with it. But I'm going to go to that one. I'm going to visit the biomethane over here. I'm going to come out round. Okay, so this one here... It's saying growth stage five of six, forage. Now, I'm assuming that means it's not quite ready for harvesting yet. Um, I think six of six is ready. Uh, not quite sure. If there's another field around. I'm just looking to see if there's another field that might be, like, nearly ripe. Field 28 is nearly ripe. Field 43 is ready to harvest. Right, that's field 43 down there. Let's go and have a look at that one a minute. Slow wade through the river. It says it's ready to harvest, so I'm hoping that there's actually a crop in here. Yes, there is. There we go. Right, ideal. Right, so we go and have a look at this one. This is saying... It's not giving us a growth stage. It says now own it. Oh, growth, ready to harvest. It just says ready to harvest, and then it's got the chickpeas there. Helper D has been blocked by an object, so I need to run back to him a minute. There. Apparently, he wants to drive into the barn for some strange reason. I'm hoping that if we can persuade the driver that going into the barn is not a good idea he will now just carry on and do the rest of the field without any more incidents so let's go to there lower down and off you trot my son right you go and do that so i've checked that one and it said not a lot a uh, plain distributor there. I'm going to jump to you because field 28 out over the... Right, that's sunflowers. They're, that's the stage before they're ready to harvest. So we can skip out over here. And we know that is definitely the stage right before they're ready to harvest. And that says growth stage 6 of 7. Right, so the growth stage shouldn't change for our corn I mean I'm not going to start it until next month so I think we can just leave the hired help now to carry on and do what it's doing I haven't got anything else that I need to worry about I'm not going to do the adjustments on the greenhouses until after I've done those two big harvests so we want to get some sleep we will fast forward until next month the cultivator can just stay working in that field and it doesn't matter what I'm, whether it, I plant canola or barley or wheat. I can do all of that in September. That will be absolutely fine. And we can get going with harvest at the same time. Now, before we do anything else, the month has changed. So I need to roll the D20 on my chart. If it's 19 or 20, we roll again because we've got 18 items on here. And today I have rolled... What is that? That's 13. All right, is 13 a lucky 13 or is it really not? Machine breakdown. I haven't had any positive things happen yet. There are half and half. 
Half of them are good and half of them are bad, and so far we've only had bad things. Machine breakdown. A tractor or loader has broken down and cannot be used this month. Right, tractor or loader. So we've got a... So it's only for a month. So for September, one of our tractors... We don't have a loader. Um, one of our tractors has broken down for the month. So we need to just go and have a look in here. Uh, no, let's not have a look in here. Let's have a look in here. And we've got that one there is a car, so that one doesn't count. Tractor or loader? Now, I specifically said tractor or loader. I didn't think about having a truck and also harvester as well. I have another machinery breakdown one. Um, it did specifically say tractor or loader. I think I did that because it needed to be like quite severe because losing a tractor is quite severe. I have other ones where I get um, potentially any of the machines break down or, well, uh, we lose them. Um, so it's not great. This one is specifically a tractor or loader. I mean, it makes sense because those are the ones that we use the most. So we've got three tractors. We've got the Deutz, we've got the McCormick, and we've got the bigger one, the... Uh, the fent right there so we've got three tractors which means that i'm going to roll a d6 and a one or a two is going to be the first one that will be a five or a six that's a one or a two and that is a three or a four so which one are we gonna lose for a month this is gonna be painful isn't it four right we have lost the mccormick for a month so we cannot use the McCormick now until next month. Which one are we using right now? Um, that's the fence. That's the Deutz out in the field. Right, okay. At least I don't have to have this tractor just parked up under a hedge while it's repaired for a month. Uh, which means it is this one. It's broken down. We cannot use it. Now, I'm going to add a little bit extra to this because... Um, I can, and I, I just think that it would be a good idea. This tractor is broken down, but it is completely and totally broken down. We cannot start it. We can't do anything with it. Now, we've got this thing. Part, this thing is hitched on the back. Um, and I'm going to say, because we cannot start this tractor up. I mean, technically, this is on a three-point link. So we could, if we were a bit clever, we could possibly find a way to put it on a pallet and then move the pallet back and get it out the way but that tractor ain't going anywhere that that tractor is basically locked up and stuck so i'm gonna say that the machine is hitched onto is also out of action um at least for this time i'm not gonna say that every time because like if we were doing this work out here and this tractor just broke down I'd want to be able to carry on doing the cultivating. And what we would do is we'd unhitch it and we'd sort of pull it away out to the side. So we'd still be able to do it. And we'd hitch on chains to the tractor and drag it out the way if we had to. Because it's in the middle of the field. Um, so, I mean, there's, there's ways and means if we really, really needed to. But at the moment, I'm just going to say we're not going to use either of those for the month. Now, what we've also got is... Are we ready for... That's as close to harvest as we're going to get uh field 35 and field 34 we need to be getting well we're close to doing harvest on those two so i'm going to go up here to the biomethane station and the gates are currently closed because it's not yet nine o'clock i'm going to jump out here and now it's saying six of six growth stage six of six forage Right, we're going to start harvesting this, this month. This, we're going to start on this harvest. So we're going to need all of the paraphernalia associated with doing that job, which means we are going to... Ooh. Right, now, do I want to do it with that one? No, I don't. I'm not going to have that one coming to do it. So we're going to want to lease a trailer because we've got some trailers. We've got these trailers. And I don't think any of these is particularly suitable for doing silage. I mean, what I could do is I could use that one. Um, this one here, if... No, I don't want to sell it. Uh, if 25.5. So, I mean, that one will do 50. This one here is 58 cubic meters. 
Um, I could string these two together. It's still not going to be as much as that one on its own. I don't really want to be going up and down the field with a lorry. I feel that's a job for a tractor. Um, I mean, the lorry is kind of an off-road thing, but I don't really think it's suitable for this area. I think trailers is what we're going to want. So what we're going to need is a trailer specifically for the job. And the type of trailer I'm looking at is we could go with something small like that, but that's not the type of trailer I'm looking at. I'm going big scale. We've got a big tractor here, so we can go big scale. We've got, uh, that's 45, that one's 47. The crone over here is 52. That one, the Stroutman, is also 52. We've got the Annaberger is 55. The uh, Bergman is 56.4. I'm going purely on the volume that these trailers can carry. Um, and we've got mods. There's various different mods. And I'm just going to have a quick look through and see if there's anything that's slightly bigger than that. I'm not going for a Stevie kind of volume. And I want it that I can pull it with a tractor as well. I don't want to be using a dolly on it. So I've got very specific conditions that need to be met. I've been looking through all of the trailers, and the majority of them are between 50 and 60,000 litres, the ones that fit the criteria that I've mentioned. Uh, that one does go up to 66,000, and there is one other I've found that goes up to 66,000, and it seems to be based on the same model as well. So it, it, it looks pretty much the same as this. So we've got Via right there. I've never heard of Via, to be honest. Um and then there's another one way back down here which is that one the Crescetto, which is exactly the same it's the same model it's just different coloring on it and that one also at sixty six thousand, like that um it does look pretty good i'm assuming we're going to need a pr pretty powerful tractor to be able to pull that one but sixty six thousand is definitely the biggest capacity that we've got of any of them it's a very long trailer it might be a little bit too big. I'm slightly concerned that we may be going over the top with this. Um, rim color. Oh, that's the, the color there. I'll go with the white rim color. I kind of like green on here. And then the design color up there. Let's go with blue. Let's just do blue on this. Design. Uh, I'll stick with... Oh, several different designs on there. Let's go with design one on there. I've got wide tires, wheel brand, 66,000. And we're going to lease this one. That is 3,111 euros for that bad boy right there. Next up, we need to have a forage harvester header. So we're looking at probably one of these. I'm thinking that does 10k across the field. I'm kind of hoping that we could find one that does a little bit more speed if we can let's have a look first before we decide on one of these these are all 10k none of these are changing every single one is 10k so i'm assuming that 10k is kind of the the standard except that one's 7k and that one's eight i'm not doing that I'm not going for anything as slow. That's a Stevie one that's 27, and that would be nice in another series, but it's not happening in this one. Um, and then we got Poplar and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, we could go for like something really small, like one of these, but no, I'm not going to do that either. And we've got Stevie edits there. Right, 10K seems to be the standard, so we'll just assume that 10K is what we're going to need here. We're going to go to the forage harvester section, and we're going to have a look through and see what we've got. Now, there's various different monsters that we've got in here, and we can try all kinds of them. Uh, I like the Jaguar there. The John Deere container one does look pretty cool, but it's I'm not going to do something experimental for this particular series right now. We're going to... the Jaguar there seems to be the smallest one. That's 626. 970 horsepower, 775, 1000 horsepower. I don't know if the increased horsepower makes a lot of difference. I'm assuming that it does. It's the tank that I guess really matters. 
is how much of the silage stuff that we can put in there. Um, so I got, I've got to decide between the John Deere or the Crone. And I think this time we're going to go with John Deere because we don't have any John Deere machinery on the farm. And I know there's quite a lot of people that do like John I know that some of you don't like John Deere, and I, I accept that. That's fine. Um, but there's quite a lot of people that do really like John Deere, and I haven't used very much John Deere yet. So we're going to go with the wide tires on here. We're not going to worry about a GPS. We'll take the longer pipe setup and the more powerful engine. So that's giving us 516,000 euros. We're going to lease that one, which is 26,000. There we go. And so I need to get something that goes with that John Deere right there. So if I go to combinations, we've got these selections right here. And I'm going to need to get the bond silage additive as well. So that one is 4.5 meters. This one is 6 meters. This one is 7.5. And this one is 9 meters wide. So we're definitely going to go with the biggest one, 9 meters wide. I'm not altering the work speed on this one. If we do silage again, I might w alter the work speed a bit. But we've got the biggest setup. We've got a really powerful uh, forage harvester. See, that says there it needs 750 horsepower. We've got more than that. At least I think we do. This one. Yeah, we took the 970. So we've definitely got the horsepower to pull to operate that one. So I'm going to lease this one as well. It's another six grand. Okay, I've got the trailer. I've got the forager. I've got the header. So now all we need is the bond silage additive. And before I get that, we're going to skip to this one. We need our biggest tractor. I'm really glad that this one didn't break down this month because that would have caused us a couple of problems. So let's whiz you up the road so that we're ready to get started. The uh, silage area has now opened. Once the tractor has finished doing the cultivating, I'm thinking we could probably just hitch the seed drill onto that other tractor and start doing some planting. Uh, we're looking at doing... Um, actually, I'm not sure what we're looking at doing in there. Barley, I think. I think I'm going to go with barley in that field. Right. I need to have a look in a second and see how much bond silage we can load into that um, forager. We've got a nice, powerful tractor, and we—it is a really big trailer, isn't it? This is a. Unfortunately, folks, that is all we have got time for today. A massive thank you to everybody who has earned their way into the Great Book of Names. To find out some more details about all the names coming past, please head into the description and click on the link to the Discord. It's a link to another video. The link is on the other video. Uh, please also consider checking out the links there for Nitrado, who provide gaming servers for games like Farming Simulator, Minecraft, Ark, and several others. And there's also Fanatical, who will help support your gaming habit by providing you with cheap games and also giving me a small commission on anything that you buy using my link. Uh, if you've enjoyed this particular video, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.